Open AI had their first ever dev conference and Sam Altman came on stage to announce some massive updates to ChatGPT and the GPT infrastructure. There were majorly three announcements and we will be going into a deep dive of all three of them individually. And if you stick until the end of this video, I will also talk a little bit about what these announcements mean for developers and people looking to develop apps, etc. using OpenAI's infrastructure. So if you're someone who's enthusiastic about AI or you're a developer or you're a college student studying software engineering, stick till the end because I've got some pretty interesting insights for you. Let's get started. Today, we are launching a new model, GPT-4 Turbo. Number one, GPT-4 Turbo. After the launch of ChatGPT-4, Sam Altman announced GPT-4 Turbo, a much more advanced and much more capable version of GPT-4. He broke down what's new about this model in six simple parameters or six simple feature additions. Let's explore them one by one. Number one is context. Context length. GPT-4 had a token limit of around 8,000 tokens, and that has been increased to 128,000 tokens. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. That's almost a 15x increase in the number of tokens. What this means is 8,000 tokens let you interact with about 5,000, 6,000-ish words, and 128,000 tokens can actually get you a response of about 96,000 words. This essentially means that you can input that many number of words in order to give ChatGPT context so that it can actually go within that particular article or document or whatever you uploaded and get you an answer based on that. So this is a pretty massive upgrade to what GPT-4 was and this will be integrated into GPT-4 Turbo. And this is equivalent to 300 pages, which is pretty much the length of any average sized book. Number two, more control. The second edition is more control and this is something that would be more relevant to a lot of developers watching this. GPT-4 Turbo has this mode called JSON mode, which when turned on can actually return a valid JSON file. And it doesn't just end there. It can actually return multiple JSON files in the same query line as well. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. It'll make calling APIs much easier. Number three, better world knowledge. Number three, something a lot of you have been waiting for, knowledge. Earlier, the knowledge cutoff was September 2021. That has been striked off. The current cutoff is in April 2023. We're also updating the knowledge cutoff. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023, and we will continue to improve that over time. That is the latest until which GPT-4 Turbo has been updated with its internal knowledge. Of course, you can plug it to the web using plugins, etc. But internally, it is updated until April 2023. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. And in addition to this, you can also bring knowledge and context from external documents. You can actually upload your entire company's knowledge base or uh, an entire book or a novel or a user manual or something and actually ask GPT questions and it will actually process all that information and give you answers and instructions or help you out in whatever way you ask it to help you out. Number four, new modalities. Number four, new modalities. Surprising no one, Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. DALI 3, GPT-4 Vision with Turbo, and their new text-to-speech system called Whisper V3. All of them will be available on the new GPT API plan. So you'll be able to access all of these tools that have been developed by OpenAI through their APIs. This is something that you could not do earlier and something that has been released to the public right now. Number five. Customization. Number five, customizations. And this is something that probably might not be relevant to a lot of you, but still it's a pretty important and cool feature. OpenAI is opening a very few select slots for huge enterprises who want to actually push the barrier of what is possible by using the OpenAI and ChatGPT APIs. So if an enterprise wants to fine tune a particular model, they can actually work directly with the OpenAI team and fine tune these custom models for their specific requirements. So again, this is something that is very relevant to enterprises, but still an important feature and development in ChatGPT. And then number six, higher rate limits. And the last feature add-on, higher rate limits. ChatGPT has essentially doubled their tokens per minute, and they've also reduced the price point by 2.75 times cheaper for anyone looking to use their APIs and develop their own apps, develop their own systems, use OpenAI systems, etc. So that is something pretty exciting for the devs. Again, remember, this is a dev conference. A lot of what Sam has been talking about is for the developer community. So a lot of the updates that Sam is bringing out is also something that he intends uh, for the developer to use more than the general public. The second major announcement is GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. 
Now, this is my personal favorite and this is something that I am very, very, very excited about. Essentially, you can think of a GPT as a very specialized bot that does a very specialized task for you using ChatGPT's infrastructure. If you've heard of the word autonomous agents before, this is exactly what it is. Essentially, GPTs are ChatGPT agents, tasked to do very specific things. For example, you can actually have a cook GPT, which can tell you recipes of dishes and you can use cook GPT while cooking. You can upload pictures and you can ask them what exactly is this dish and this is all cook gpt will talk about you can have fitness gpt which will give you a fitness training plan every day or a nutrition plan every day you can have a founder's advisor gpt which is something that sam demoed as well where if you're a founder and if you want a virtual mentor to give you advice as a founder it can actually have that specific knowledge and it'll give you the particular advice that you need as a founder i always wanted to do that after like all of the yc office hours i always thought man someday i'll be able to make a bot that will do this and that'll be awesome and the crazy part about GPTs is that it can do all of this in natural language. You don't need to be a programmer to code or anything like that. It's almost like creating an app. You can just write, hey, can you create me a GPT that mimics a fitness trainer? I want it to give me a nutrition plan every week. I want it to review my body mass index. I want it to give me timely reminders. It will integrate into your calendar and give you calendar reminders. All of that. No lines of code, only with natural language. This is something that is revolutionary. This democratizes the process of app making. And adding on to this, ChatGPT is going to have a store. We're going to launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. Pretty much like your Play Store and App Store where anybody and everybody can create their own GPTs. They can list it on the store and they can actually sell it. This is incredible. OpenAI is slowly transitioning into a platform where people can actually build their own AI tools and products and actually sell them and monetize them. It's an exciting time to be in the AI space. Essentially, GPTs are a combination of custom instructions, instructions that you actually give it in order to customize and limit its usability. It can have expanded knowledge within that particular niche. And finally, it can perform certain actions. Like for example, I can integrate a GPT into my Zapier and I can actually have it automate all my emails. If I wanted to go through my emails and ask it to give me a summary of all my emails for today, it'll actually do that. If I just tell GPT, hey, remind me to do this and send uh, my boss uh, an email telling that I'll be late for this meeting, it will actually go and do that on my behalf. GPT is designed to take in your instructions, make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information. So what if I want to let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know I got to go um, chasing GPUs. And then I'm going to say, yes, please run that. Sam, did you get that? I did. And finally, the third major announcement, Assistance API. With our new Assistance API. Think of Assistance API as GPTs, but instead of doing it directly via the ChatGPT native interface, you can actually do it via the API. So this is obviously much more relevant for developers. A few key things to notice here are threads, and this is going to be pretty exciting for devs because now ChatGPT can have memories. ChatGPT can actually go back and analyze past threads that you've actually had with it, and it can get context of conversation based on these threads. It's almost like ChatGPT has its own memory now using the Assistance API. The next one is Retrieval, which is almost like an extension of memory. It can actually go back to previous chats and reference stuff that it had actually said earlier, probably a day earlier, probably two days earlier. And this is something that did not exist earlier as well. And finally, you have Code Interpreter and Function Calling. A demo here will explain exactly what these tools do and how these tools integrate and work together. Imagine I'm building Wanderlust, a travel app for global explorers, and this is the landing page. And as these users engage with their assistant, I will add their messages to these threads. Very simple. And then I can simply run the assistant at any time to stream the responses back to the app. So we can return to the app and try that in action. If I say, hey, let's go to Paris. All right, that's it. With just a few lines of code, users can now have a very specialized assistant right inside the app. And I'd like to highlight one of my favorite features here, function calling. If you have not used it yet, function calling is really powerful. And as Sam mentioned, we're taking it a step further today. It now guarantees the JSON output with no added latency, and you can invoke multiple functions at once for the first time. So here, if I carry on and say, hey, what are the top 10 things to do? 
I'm going to have the assistant respond to that again. And here, what's interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now all of these pins are dropping in real time here. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. And it truly showcases now the harmony you can build between AI and UI, where the assistant is actually taking action. But next, next, let's talk about retrieval. And retrieval is about giving our assistant more knowledge beyond these immediate user messages. In fact, I got inspired and I already booked my tickets to, uh, to Paris. So I'm just gonna drag and drop here this PDF. What it's uploading, I can just sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United flight ticket. And behind the scene here, what's happening is that retrieval is reading these files and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. So that's it with the announcements. Now, what exactly does all of this really mean for developers or announcement really mean in a very real world practical sense? Well, I think one of the most game changing things over here was GPTs, the actual AI agents that ChatGPT was releasing and the app store that ChatGPT was releasing. Ever since generative AI tools have been out there, especially tools that have API access like Stable Diffusion, GPT, etc. One thing that has been the talk of the town is that it is going to become Become pretty easy in order to build and ship products because you essentially have these platforms you essentially have these generators or these models that can actually generate a certain kind of a quality output and if you stitch it with the right things if you put a nice little wrapper on it you can actually build a great product and you can actually put it out there so it definitely reduces the entry barrier both in terms of costs effort time taken in order to build a product this is going to reduce that even more because now you don't even need to know how to code now you don't even need to stitch these tools together. You can actually just write natural language and build an app entirely of your own. You can have your own personal mentor. You can have your own personal piano teacher. You can do whatever you want with these platforms. And I think the barrier of anyone creating an app has become extremely, extremely low. It's almost like everyone can call themselves a product builder or a product manager. I know that's like stretching it too far, but essentially that's what GPTs are enabling us to do in today's world. And it's incredible how fast all of this has happened like it was only last year when gpt3 actually went out and it's only been a year and we've had so much advancement so much pace so much movement but on the same lines i believe gen ai is the future what you're going to see six months down the line a year down the line is every single company every single startup looking to integrate gen ai in their workflow in some way or the other it is going to become inevitable so if there's one bet that you would like to take as a developer as a coder in terms of upskilling in terms of being knowledge ready for the world, it is going to be generative AI. Knowing how to work with generative AI tools, knowing how to fine tune models, knowing how to work with these existing models and build on top of it. That is exactly what you need to do as a developer and a coder. And to do this, of course, you'll need to know the fundamentals because if you don't know the ABCs, you won't be able to write a book. So make sure you know the fundamentals. Those things are definitely not ignorable. Yes, a lot of things are easier. But if you really want to make an impact in this space, it is important to know things right from the scratch. 